welcome back to another episode of Feathercast. And ordinarily, we talk about Apache projects on Feathercast, but today we're going to be talking about Apache infrastructure. My name is Rich Bowen, and today I'm speaking with Andrew Wetmore, who is one of our fine team members on the on the infrastructure team. One of the things about inf infrastructure is that we typically only think about it when it breaks, and because Apache infrastructure never breaks, we never think about you guys. So, uh, tell us tell us a little bit about your team. Well, they're all young and handsome, and built <laughs> like rugby linemen, um, and they can sing in perfect harmony. I'm I'm the most recent addition to the team, and play the part of the little bot who goes around and cleans up the vocabulary of things, whereas the other guys do the significant code stuff. And because of COVID, I've never actually met my colleagues. So I can make up a lot of good stories about them. <laughs> but these are folks, uh, I think they all came into Apache through projects. So they were, as I did, I, I was, uh, I'm connected to a couple of projects and have been doing our volunteer committing and editing and working and representing the project and became interested in what the infrastructure team was doing mm -hmm. and found that there was a niche there for us. And the niche is running around sometimes and patching all those things that you say never break. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I got involved with Apache, the infrastructure team was was Brian and you'd get email from Brian saying I've done this thing for you and we've we've grown quite a bit there not just in the team but also in the infrastructure from from three or four servers in those days what kind of an infrastructure are you overseeing now oh lord um when I was just began to assemble the other day a history of infra because I thought we might as well grab this yeah um and I gather it has some stories that we'll have to put on a page that's non, not safe for work and all that, that sort of thing. <laughs> but there was a time, as you say, when the whole infrastructure was a computer under somebody's desk. And now it is hundreds, hundreds of virtual machines, each one with a uh, its own particular configuration, serving all our, all our projects and all our committers and the machinations of the software foundation as we support uh, downloads and we blockade the site against uh, mm -hmm. uh, against denial of service attacks and we deal with spam and we deal with interesting queries from other countries about uh, how, how, do, how are we dealing with personally identifiable information and how mm -hmm. do we handle that so it matches what Germany wants uh, us to do. Um, I've, I can't give you a precise number on on how many virtual servers there are because they go up and down as, sure. as uh, projects ask oh can we have another virtual server we spin one up the thing that astonishes me and maybe it well maybe we should make it look harder because these <laughs> my colleagues make these things happen i think yeah. oh well uh, they're gonna they're gonna spin up another another virtual machine and populate it and just it seems to me minutes later, the thing is up and ready for the project to work with. It is a product of over 20 years of gradually assembling, discarding, reassembling, recomposing the structures and the templates that make it possible to do quite quickly a thing that needs to be done. Different people on the infrastructure team obviously have different strengths. What do you do? What's your, what's your forte? My strength is in, in words, writing, editing, documentation. Um, the team, the, the project in uh, the Software Foundation I, I work with, that's what I do for that is documentation. I've built software, but I'm, I'm better with words. The infrastructure team over its 20 odd years of existence has built up this wonderful pile of information, about a third of which is silt. And part of my job is to go through and scrape out the silt. And the, this document says, do this thing this way. And that one says, do it exactly the opposite way. Which one is now functional? Because I would rather run into these things than have some poor 
project member who's trying to figure out how they fix this and that. So I'm dealing with silt. I'm dealing with style. We have a lot of writing that is very either very, very stiff and with a lot of passive voice, so it's hard to figure out what you're supposed to do, or it's sort of jokey mm -hmm. with North American jokes and references. And again, if you're not from North America, it's a little puzzling. Does that, do they really mean that? Could they possibly? So I go through and try to peel out the quirks so that the text is more direct. And then the third thing we're working on now is terminology. When you back in the day when your beard was brown, we talked without flinching about master and slave computer systems. We understand a bit better now that that's hurtful language. It's, it, it brings up too many things from the past and also things that are current, given the estimated 18 million people in slavery around the world today. So we're working through to make sure that words that are hurtful don't recur mm -hmm. in ways that you can't avoid them when you're dealing with either Apache software or websites or documentation. So those are the, those are the, that's the piece I try to add is making it so we have a good thing that we are offering for people to run with. Do we have a good way of explaining it so they'll get it and it so it won't confuse them or make them sad? Now I have, I have another question before we go on to some of the topics that you mentioned. Yeah. Um, so again, back in back in the old days, um, <laughs> we used to talk about the infrastructure tax, which was if you if you run an Apache project, you're expected to spend some time working on the infrastructure. And then a decade or so ago, we moved to more of a professional services model, where yes. we where we have a a paid team that handles our infrastructure. But there's still opportunities for volunteer involvement. So yes. Can you tell us something about that? Um, you know, the, the perception can be, well, we have professionals for that. I don't need to get involved. But where can I get involved? Well, there's a whole layer of activities that recur and are not too complex, but do take time. For instance, we have all sorts of cool tools that a committer who is experienced knows to, how to find and where to find and how to use them. So if you needed to update your personal information, Rich, you'd know where to go. Mm -hmm. You know, But for a lot of our colleagues in the, in the Apache world, it's, it's not immediately obvious where to go. We get these queries. So we have a, a number of volunteers who sit on our mailing list and try to catch those queries and say, oh, if you want to Here's an obvious one. If you want to unsubscribe from that mailing list, here is how you do it. If you want to change your your name on your on your Apache account, here is how to do that. At another level, we get a lot of spam that comes in, um, even as uh, Jira tickets and and in uh, comments and in GitHub repositories, and people. Uh, message us with their hair on fire saying, can someone help us get rid of this thing and block that account? And we have people who are who are able to do that quite quickly. So the core team that you, that you mentioned that is doing the heavy lifting can go on doing the heavy lifting without worrying too much about that. If somebody wants to um, investigate volunteering with Infra, if they go to infra.apache.org, there's a, a fairly solid banner that says, oh, come help Infra. And you could begin the conversation and see what, which skills that the person has match most closely with which needs that Infra has. All of the Apache projects and various of the other functions of the foundation have websites. Yes. And infrastructure provides a variety of ways to manage and edit those websites. Yeah. Tell us about what's going on with the CMS these days. Oh, the CMS. This has been a wonderful project that was spun up basically by one person about 11 years ago, a content management system. And it served its purpose very well for, mm -hmm. for a long decade, but has reached the end of life, partly because the person who had spun it up was no longer available. A lot of the code was a little bit harder to understand than we wanted to deal with. 
So over the past months, we've been migrating all the projects that have been using the content management system onto other tools for building and deploying their websites. We've built in particular a template in Pelican, which is cool language. So it, both an existing project or a project coming out of the um, incubator could use the template very quickly to develop a, uh, a website that answers that satisfies all the requirements that Apache has for mm -hmm. such a website and provides a lot of room for customization. But there are people who, uh, for various reasons, depending on their skills um, or, or that, that is what technologies that that particular project team knows, prefer to use some other tool. And so we've got a whole range of tools that we support and we'll give, give a helping hand to projects to get them hooked up so they're connected to the continuous integration tool. And that means you edit your website, you're satisfied with it, you save it to the live system. And about four minutes later, the website is updated wherever it is people are looking at it. Pelican and the other tools that we're using now, all the infra team members can get in there with a wrench and a crowbar if they have to and fix something that's gone wrong. Whereas the, the, the code for the content management system as was, was a little harder to, for us to figure out. We made this migration and it was, we, we started saying about a year and a half ago, it's almost over. The content management system is going to fall over and we got to move everybody very soon. And nothing much happened. And then we had to go on with, a, with an encouraging conversation. Yeah. Come, come on, you can do it and we can do it and we'll do it. And we got to the point now where there are four projects left on the content management system. And if any one of them goes to look to update their site now, they'll find they can't do it. And that will be, an, I guess, an encouragement for them to come talk to Infra and we'll help migrate them. Now, our projects at Apache produce a lot of software and yep. that gets downloaded millions of times. Yeah. And uh, the way that we've handled that in the past is with a mirror network. Yep. Tell us about your plans for the mirror network. Okay, first off, a mirror network, a, a mirror site is just a copy of the main site for downloading software and a mirror site under the old pattern around four times a day would go and check. Is there anything I need to update? So you could be as much as a, a day behind on a download mirror from what was on the main site. Organizations, universities would undertake to host such a mirror and I, in, I ran one in the long, long ago. Yes, when it, back when it was smaller. <laughs> yes, and 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 um, uh, and part of the reason was that it made things faster for you to, for people near where you were to download the the software. So if we help, if we were all trying to download from one site, of course we crash that. Mm -hmm. If we were all trying to download from one site in somewhere in the United States, and there were people from Tanzania and Uzbekistan trying to download it, they'd have troubles, bandwidth and downloading times. We have moved to a content distribution network that is much, much faster. We have, time, we have moved on from when the mirrors were, were first uh, became necessary, um, quite reliable. And the update time between the time when you say, here's my code that I would like people to be able to download and when it's available is about an hour. And that's down from 24 hours or more. It does mean that we have a whole cadre of people who have kindly been offering their resources to the Apache Software Foundation and they're heroes. One of the challenges ahead of us is say, how do we take that goodwill and deploy it in other aspects of support for what the Software Foundation and open source software in general is doing. I don't have a quick answer for that, but it's it's a thing we're working on. We're gonna have some proposals, but partly it's it's gonna depend on what the, what the interests of the people who have been the mirror sites are. It will still be possible to have a, a local mirror site of the Apache download site, if, it, yeah, if you choose to, or if you're in a country which for some reason requires that, 
um, you'd be able to have that still, but it would still be under the conditions that would end up with a 24 hour delay sometimes between what you have and what's what's the latest stuff. If, if you relied heavily on Apache products and in, in your organization, having a local mirror might might speed your downloads for people within your organization, perhaps. Yes, exactly, exactly. And as you remember, there, there are two flavors of the download mirrors. There's the one that is give us everything mm -hmm. and the other one that's give us everything except these two or three things over here that are just huge. Yeah. And um, and your organization may not use either, any of those really, really large ones. So we, we're going we're gonna to maintain that, but for the bulk of the Apache projects, they now go through our content distribution system. They don't have to worry about telling people how to find a mirror or what, you know, what to do about the mirror. Um, and the other thing is, aside from that, some t aside from some text changes on their websites, the only thing th changes they're going to experience are improvements in terms of speed. There's not there's not a new workflow to learn or a um, a uh, new set of set of doorways to have to fight your way through. You're you're talking on in terms of the projects themselves. Yes, exactly. So the projects don't have to change anything to take advantage of this new distribution mechanism. Exactly. For the person going to download, the whole the whole head scratcher of which download mirror right. I choose goes away, and you just say, "I want this thing." The content distribution network does the figuring out of. What's the most convenient way to deliver it to you? And as we know, nothing will go wrong. <laughs> now, in the old days when we would have, I keep saying that, um, in the, the old, old days, days here, it's 10 years when ago. Your beard, when, when we, your beard was brown? When it wasn't, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, when we had in-person conferences, we'd always have an infrastructure table at the conference where you could come yes. by and talk to infrastructure. Yes. Where's that table these days? If I want to talk to the infrastructure team, what's the best, fastest way to get hold of you? If I wanted to get hold of me real quick, I'd go to this, uh, go to Slack, which is a tool which you, you, you probably are comfortable with or know of. And there was a Slack channel in the Apache ASF space called Infra hyphen Team. And I'd join myself to that and say, help, 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 help. And we do it. The other way is to, to subscribe to the Infra email system. We obviously we don't have tables these days because of the COVID situation, but we're looking forward to doing that again next year, hopefully. Next year, not only that, we have we're supposed to meet in person. The team is once or twice a year, and we've had in the past really remarkable gatherings in all sorts of really interesting touristic places. And for 2020, we were planning to meet in Nashville. And yeah, and I was planning to drive down there and hang out with you guys. This sort of thing, and you were going to you were going to bring snacks, <laughs> and and that didn't happen, of course. And uh, I was just talking with with Greg, our, uh, our our boss, yesterday, I think, and he said, "I'm going to I'm starting to think through where, if all works well, we'll meet for in the spring of 2022." Absolutely. And I think that would be real fun because it's not just a hangout time. It's a, it's a um, bug bashing session and code development and getting a better sense of where people are bringing their thought process onto a problem. Yeah. And that allows the team to work better when it's, when it's all distributed as we are now. So I'm speaking to you from Eastern Canada. Daniel Gruno, who uh, was in Denmark until recently is now in central Canada. We have someone in France. We have other people in places that are somewhere in the United States. And part of that reason is we like having people in a lot of time zones yeah. so that we can handle, we have someone, can have someone on call at all, all hours of the day and night without having them, Excellent. you know, yeah. go crazy from lack of sleep. Thank you again so much for your time. Uh, speaking with us. And, and thank you, even more than that, thank you for the work that your team does. We we appreciate it hugely. And like I said, we don't think about it much because of how infrequently things break. So thank you for that. Well, we this is fun. This is, and it's very satisfying to go through a period of time where nothing really has gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it, but, it, it, but it is you know, of course, it's like the dishes. If they're done, nobody notices right. them. And, and that, that's how it should be.
<laughs> so we're we're honored to uh, work with all the ASF teams with the with the man the members and with every person who comes in asking what's this open software stuff